What's up, everybody? This is Anthony Claditis from Engaged Podcast coming at you. Today we have a variety of topics to talk about. We have a really great quote from D.L. Moody, and uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about the uh, coronavirus, not necessarily about the virus itself, because we all know that Seth and I are not scientists. No. However, we're going to be talking about a godly response to the virus. I like it. Yeah, it, it's... We had a blast doing it, and I hope you have a blast listening. And So sit back, relax, open your mind, and engage with us as you listen to this week's episode. podcast is even when there's a deadly virus out you could still do it yeah as long as you and i are are good then i'm good we'll keep going um so today's quote especially for time like with what's all going on is perfect um it's a deal moody quote it says out of a hundred men one will read the bible the other 99 will read the christian let me say that one more time. Out of a hundred men, one will read the Bible; the other ninety-nine will read the Christian. So I listen. Who is D. L. Moody, or who was he? Are you asking because you really don't know? Or are you asking just so I can clarify to our listeners? Well, it's a trick question. So okay, go ahead. Well, he's a pastor. He's uh, he was a pastor in the early ninth or twentieth century. He was extremely well spoken. And he was his say his tagline was that he was the people's pastor. Like he was very he was very intelligent, but he spoke in very everyday language, didn't use big words, and a lot of people resonated with that. And he was also very gifted at preaching and leadership and uh, wrote lots and lots and lots of books and started his own school, which is now called the Bible the Moody Bible Institute. Really cool, Chicago. really cool fast fact, you know, where being from Newcastle, Pennsylvania, with all its glory, have you ever heard of the Sankey Center? I have, yeah, downtown. So that's named after a guy named Ira Sankey. Okay. And Ira Sankey was D.L. Moody's right-hand man in terms of music. Really? Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah. Look into his history. Uh, it's pretty cool. So there's a little bit of history there right in our backyard. It is really cool. Mm-hmm. Somebody should should someone should compose a book of all the fun facts about Newcastle because there there really is a lot like stuff that started like the fact that the Warner Brothers started in, in Newcastle like that's a fun fact that nobody believes me mm-hmm. I have to get out Wikipedia or Google well you do remember um, the other fast fact about Newcastle the Arby's <laughs> well that was that was Youngstown wasn't yeah. it yeah no no I'm talking about our two sports in in, in Newcastle. What you remember what they were? Oh. Fighting in football. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. I for some reason was thinking you were talking about professional sports. Uh, well, Newcastle trades football like they are professional, but um, back to our co- quote, the right. Moody. Um, so what are your so what comes to mind whenever you hear that particular quote? And the reason why I said it's connected to this is, I want you to see it again. Yeah, like I'll see it again. here. There you go. Number 64 on our list. Yeah, out of 100 men, one will read the Bible and the other 99 will read the Christian. I think that's absolutely true. You know, he's not, I think it's first important to, to clarify he's not saying, you know, not to read the Bible. Right. He's Just saying that you're. Rea- re- realistically, you, people at your work are going to be more apt to w- read you rather than read the Bible. Yeah. As a Christian, yeah. Yeah, people are always watching your life, you know, watching the things you say, seeing how you handle things, and um, they're sort of reading you. I'm actually preaching on a passage in James this week. In chapter 3, verse 1, he says, uh, Let not many of you become teachers, knowing that as such we shall incur a stricter judgment or greater condemnation. That's pretty heavy 
thing to think about. You know, he's, he's saying, let not every one of you become a teacher because you're going to get judged in a way that's harsher than most people. You know, there's more eyes on you, watching you. And when people first hear this, they clearly, I bet they think of the, the pastor, which they should. But that is really applying to any kind of teaching position, mm -hmm. right? That is an elder, a deacon. Um, what about even a parent? Isn't it true in your own home that your children will look to you with stricter judgment, saying, look, Dad, look, Mom, you're, you're saying one thing but living another way? And so you have to be very mindful of that. Well, yeah, I, I can tell you right now that the weight of that comes in. Um, talk to anyone who either was a Christian and no longer identifies himself as a Christian. Talk to anyone who went to church as a kid and doesn't believe in Christianity now. And it will always somehow will be brought back to they saw someone who claimed to be a Christian acting a certain way and they went, I want nothing to do with that. And so, but I, my question now is God is obviously, uh, he's in control of everything. He is sovereign. He is, um, all knowing everything I believe, and maybe this could be another podcast topic, but everything that he does is for specific purpose and reasoning. I mean, Romans eight twenty eight talks about that, that everything has a reason behind it. Um, for Christians, it's for our good. God obviously handpicked it to be that way, that we would be like the storefront to his kingdom as Christians, that we would be the living Bible for those non-believers. My question is, is, as flawed and sinful human beings as we are, why do you think God would would put so much responsibility and weight on our on our our shoulders to be that. Because when I hear this, that terrifies me. Because I know my fr my friends and family and coworkers are all watching me, mm -hmm. right? And if I have a bad day, or if I um, act in a way that's ungodly, I feel like I have shipwrecked that person's chances of ever getting to know the gospel or seeing it in a clear light. Yeah. I think those are, uh, those are good observations. So we find our identity in Christ, and being a Christian just means being Christ-like, many Christ. So it's like you're going around telegraphing the people that if if you claim to have that name, the name of Christian, then you are somehow identifying with Jesus. So then people automatic they'll, they'll think to themselves, well, how did Jesus act, and how did Jesus think? And in Acts, in the book of Acts, when Jesus ascended, that's exactly what happened. You know, they weren't called Christians, the first followers. They were called the way. Mm -hmm. And then at some point in Acts, I don't have that in front of me, um, after the apostles had left, there was this effect that they had on people, and they started calling them Christians. Well, how did they do that? They just watched and observed the way they spoke, the way they treated one another, and they probably sat and thought to themselves, well, gee, the way they speak and the way they act reminds me a whole heck of a lot of that guy Jesus and the way he taught and the way he acted. And so you're following in his footsteps, and that's the essence of what Christianity is. But that leads, I think, into a really important point, too, is since we are flawed, what happens when we fail? And I think that really has to be a part of the the walk with God is that we have to have that built into uh, some kind of theological understanding. Hmm. Because if you don't, then you're going to walk around and, and be phony. And you're going to walk around and try to deceive people like you're super spiritual and perfect. And that's just, uh, that's garbage. So I think to have some kind of system in place or understanding, uh, at, at least to be humble enough to have some kind of system or process that you go through when you do fail. Yeah, I was going to say, so the consensus is, and I think everyone listening is going to agree with us too, that what's not changing is that, that quote, which is that out of 100 men, one of them is going to read the Bible, the other 99 are going to read the Christian. That is, that's just, that's just the reality. We're not, we're not going to change that. 
So I think what we can change is, and I'm just going back to what I originally said about that puts a lot of weight on me as to like, okay, I, I don't want to shipwreck someone's ability, ability to see Jesus or the gospel in a clear light. Uh, personally, I could tell you that the big a game changer for me uh, or that I've seen is when Christians act in an inappropriate way or they're not applying the gospel to a certain situation, but when they're called out on it, rather than doubling down and trying to justify why they're right in doing that, they just say, you know what, you're absolutely right. I was wrong for doing that, you know, and th thank you for pointing that out. And, you know, this is, this is, I think, one of the greatest benefits of being a Christian is that I know that it's not up to me. I'm not the hero. So I can, I, you know, thank you for letting me know that, and I really appreciate that. I think if Christians did that more often, n now we're not only setting the tone as far as, like, Christians are better people as far as like we're working on ourselves constantly but even when we miss like even when when we fail people get to see the humility there and they see jesus through that and kind of what i preached about this past sunday which is how how you let jesus share you know shine through your imperfections is doing just that which is you know what i'm a flawed individual yeah i messed up i screwed up it is what it is. Thank you for letting me know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to work on that. Thank you for holding me accountable. I think if Christians did that more often, because I, when I read quotes like this, I immediately think, okay, well then we have to be as perfect as possible. But in that, in that sense, if we're willing to be open and honest with other people, even when we mess up, we're still setting, the, we're still setting an example of humility with those other people. So I think it's the doubling down that gets people so razzled up about Christians or self self righteous people. It's a huge character flaw. I think it's true in Christians, unfortunately. It's true in most people, I think generally. But I think it should be less true for the Christian. You know, there should be a, a process and you should admit when you do something wrong and seek to make it right. Apologize. So because throw a current affair in here with this whole virus going on this coronavirus i've seen it you've seen it we talked a little bit about it before we recorded which is the fact that there's mayhem in grocery stores and there's pe people are just i think overreacting on social media what would be a good uh what would be a warning that you'd give those christians out there in the midst of this chaotic time yeah, I, for me, it, it would come down to simply loving your neighbor. And, you know, Paul tells us in Romans 13, he tells us to love. He says, love does no wrong to a neighbor. Love is the fulfillment of the law. And you see people going crazy or starting to, you know, trying to grab that last roll of Scott's toilet paper. I don't know why you're waiting to buy toilet paper right now. I'm, I'm hoping you've had some in your house at some point. And I also hope you've been washing your hands before this virus. But that aside, the essence of how we should treat each other is to love our neighbors ourselves. So during this time when a crisis can bring the worst out in people, I think this is a call for Christians for it to bring out the best in us, to let our light shine, to be loving and caring towards our neighbors. And I, I definitely agree. I mean, I think... If you, at least if you go in, back into church history, the thing that set Christians apart from everyone else is that when plagues came in, I'm thinking specifically about the 4th fourth, fourth century, there's a letter by, uh, it's called the Letter of Di Diognetus, you can Google it, um, in which a, uh, a Roman official was uh, writing to Rome about the state of, um, the state of, the state of the land. And one of the things he wrote is that the Christians, when everyone else is running because of the plague or the famine or whatever, while everyone else is running, the Christians are staying behind to take care of the sick, knowing full well that they're probably going to get sick themselves. And the fact that they were watching after each other, even at their own demise, that spoke more than any sermon ever could. And I think as Christians, we have to understand that we are proclaiming 
um, a message of love to the degree that God sent his son onto the earth to die in our place. And that great sacrifice is what brings about the salvation for all of us. As Christians, we have to realize that that's the message we're proclaiming. We have to do that ourselves, which is to love your neighbor isn't just in our current culture. We use the word love in many different ways. To me, love really comes down to you looking out for your neighbor, even at the point of your end demise. I don't think this virus is that bad, not the way that these plagues were, but, you know, not buying so much toilet paper or even like not buying so much food just so that the elderly lady uh, who can't get to the line as fast as you can, so she can still have some too. You know, and I think to me, like, that was what it comes down to is, is that you have to set the example in the fact that it's others before yourself. I mean, that's really, I mean, that's what humility comes down to. That's what the gospel comes down to is uh, because of Jesus Christ, we're no longer thinking about ourselves. We're thinking about others around us and making sure we take care of those. I like it. Awesome. All right, everyone. Well, thank you for joining in. Hope you have enjoyed it. I know I definitely enjoyed it. If you have, um, if you have a, comment or quote or even talk to if you have a movie quote something that gets your brain stewing and you think it would be a good topic of conversation for us to talk about here on engage podcast uh go ahead and drop it uh in the comment section below if you're on youtube or if you're on um a podcast app go ahead and go to our website um faithpc.net and drop it in the contact or you could just email it us um, to the podcast web, uh, I'm sorry, email, which is faithpresbychurchpa at gmail.com. Either way, we would love to hear you guys and uh, hear your voice and see what you guys think and uh, possibly get uh, your comment, your quote on this podcast to talk about it as well. Anything you want to say before we head out? All right. Thanks, guys. Have a great week. Stay safe out there. Bye.